If you were an American kid in 2004 or 2005, you probably saw this at your school's book fair. Seeing the reflective gold cover of this Guinness Book of World Records personally unlocked some deep memories from the recesses of my brain. I was in first grade when this book came out, and for some reason, owning one of these was some kind of prepubescent status symbol across the nation, even in Little Herman, Maine, where I grew up. And in case you're wondering, it was significantly cheaper to buy on Amazon 16 years later than it was at the Scholastic Book Fair in 2005. But this otherwise random piece of world record publication has gained some attention recently for the most unusual reason. Enter Lex the Wonder Dog. Lex the Wonder Dog was produced and directed by Sidney Ling, who also starred in the film. What's so remarkable about it? Well, Ling was apparently 13 at the time the movie was made, in 1973, making him the world's youngest professional filmmaker and landing him in this book. If it's in Guinness Book of World Records, it has to be real, right? Well, if you were to look for Lex the Wonder Dog, you would unfortunately come up totally short. There is not a single second from this film on YouTube, Twitter, or even Vimeo. If it weren't for Guinness, you would probably think it never existed. And you would be right. It never did. Sidney Ling is an elusive man. Without a Wikipedia page or any official website, it is difficult to find any verifiable information on him. Fortunately, I am far from the first to try. On the Finding Desperado podcast, Alexi Tuliopoulos and Cam James delved into the mystery quite a bit. I will tell you, I thought it was fake because it seemed extremely suspicious, incredibly phony to me. And doing the minimal amount of Google searching, there is absolutely no proof of the existence of this movie. The most we could find were two people on IMDb saying it's a very good movie. <laughs> and that's it. And it seemed very much written by the same person who we assumed is Lord Sidney Ling, the youngest filmmaker in the world. The two hosts claimed that the only real proof of the film existed within IMDb reviews, which I went ahead and verified. There are three reviews total on that film's page, all of which argue that Sidney Ling is above and beyond talented. While all three reviews are noteworthy, there was one that stuck out to me particularly, from Elite Finance. Hey, as I'm editing this video, the review that I was going to talk about got deleted within the past few days. Um, I kind of revolved a good chunk of this video around this review, but fortunately I did write it down and record it, so I'll be able to discuss it, and just please know that it was deleted, and I'm not sure why, but this other guy's reviews are still up, so we'll talk about those a little bit. Okay. I have seen a couple of films in the 80s, and also recently with Sidney Ling, officially H. Ill H. Count and Lord Sidney Ling, and a few film and TV productions either produced or directed by him, but... What I didn't realize is that this is the same Sidney Ling who directed Lex the Wonder Dog when he was 13 years old, multi-listed in the Guinness World of Records. He was the world's youngest producer, writer, and director. Apart from several genre films, I also saw a few arty movies made by him and discovered that this man is really multi-talented on and off screen. A shame that he seems to be so selective when it comes to taking on offers as an actor or director. L.F. Berman, Elite Finance. Subjectively speaking, this review isn't too strange compared to the other two. However, what stands out to me are the other reviews made by Elite Finance, all made within days of each other. These two other reviews were for the films West of the Rio Grande and State of Mind, both associated with Sidney Ling as a minor actor and casting director, respectively. What's most bizarre is how this individual seems to obsess over Ling's roles in these obscure movies, as though his presence made that much of a difference. One part of his State of Mind review is as follows. When checking the credits for this film, I noticed the name of the amazing Sidney Ling as casting director. Whoever convinced him to participate in this adventure is a question mark for me, but I am almost sure that he convinced the actors to come over to Belgium. Having studied the many careers of Sidney Ling, he remains the greatest dealmaker and negotiator as well. Now, these reviews were made almost 15 years ago, long before the mystery surrounding Lex the Wonder Dog began to pop up on the internet. And before I make you wonder if there's more missing movies we should be hunting for, I'm sorry to ruin your fun, but State of Mind is a real movie that actually exists. Stand 
State of Mind. Starring Manute van der Molen, Dawn Anna of Nightmare on Elm Street 2, Jill Sholem of Popcorn and Rich Girl, and Fred Williamson of Delta Force Commando and Three Days to a Kill. State of Mind. The madness is just the beginning. And so is West of the Rio Grande, which more fascinatingly does in fact feature Sidney Ling in a small capacity. But believe it or not, the weirdness doesn't stop with these reviews. With a bit more digging, you're able to uncover a whole new world of bizarre claims and obsessive fascination surrounding Ling. Welcome to Lord Sidney Ling over the years. Blogspot.com. There is a lot to unpack here. This jarring blogspot page from 2006 pronounces itself with a multitude of claims about Sidney Ling, all of which I can only describe as bizarre. For starters, his website makes it known that he understands 12 different languages and can sing in seven. Orson Welles, yes, that Orson Welles, once tried to convince him to stay in school before becoming a filmmaker. He apparently made his first documentary at the age of eight. The blog spot includes a mysterious depiction of Ling as some kind of child god protecting a dog. While looking through the blog, it can be deduced that Ling was credited as saving the street dogs of Ibiza from dog catchers. If you have the time, energy, and determination to read or even just scan this novel of a website, you'd be impressed that Lord Sidney has been generous enough to include an interview with himself and Peter Kinsley, a Spanish journalist whose most notable work seems to be this. What I also and always appreciated in you is saving the lives of the Ibiza street dogs from the dog catchers during the old days, not to speak of quite a few people on the island. Do you still think about those moments today? Yes, of course I do. The Ibiza street dogs were my great friends. I spent many years with them, and they followed me for many years, and apart from saving them more than once from the dog catchers, we lived many great adventures. When it comes to saving people, yes. I saved a few, and in all senses, as you may remember. I think, however, that perhaps the most hypocritically fascinating quote on this page is as follows. Lord Sidney seems allergic to stupid, limited, and greedy people. He is someone who cares more about others than himself. He does everything naturally because he is a natural. <sighs> Do I even need to comment on this? It goes a bit deeper than this, though. If you scroll to the bottom of the page, you'll notice three interesting links. A blogspot page for the Lord Sidney Ling fan club, a blogspot page for the Lord Sidney Ling museum, and a citation for the presumed manager of the page, Heller and Meyer Management. Don't worry, we'll talk about those other pages in a little bit. Heller and Meyer Management follows the same pattern we've seen with everything Sydney Ling related. There seems to be no evidence they exist. I did end up reaching out to the email they provided on the blog, but it has been about a year and I haven't heard back. So I think it's safe to assume the management company, if it ever existed, is currently inactive. Either that, or they don't want to deal with me. The fan club website was also established in 2009 and doesn't seem to have been updated since then. An interesting revelation is made on the page. The fan club still organizes a yearly two-day party for fans and friends, which includes the yearly lunch and diner, music and exposed art and memorabilia. We always try to have the Lord with us during the yearly fan club meetings if possible, and if available, and when not somewhere in the Himalayas or elsewhere. I certainly hadn't seen anything about a fan club during my Google searches, so this was interesting to say the least. The page offers several more peculiar claims about Ling as well, including giving him the title of the youngest physical trainer, youngest photographer, and youngest public relations executive. Sydney Ling is also proclaimed as once having been a young bullfighter, which I hadn't seen on the last couple of pages, but then again it was hard to focus on the word vomit. There are so many ludicrous claims on the website that even if they were worth validating, I'm not sure it could. 
Perhaps that's why the page chooses to announce these things. It simply isn't worth proving. <laughs> but did you really think we were done here? Hopefully you didn't forget about the cherry on top, the Lord Sydney Ling Museum. Yeah, this one is wild too. Ling apparently has a private museum that features art from around the world, from his friends, and even from the man himself. Remember how he was the world's youngest photographer? How could you forget? His private museum holds the sacred photo he took at age five. I know there's so much of the man to cover, but I want to return to the subject we started off with. Lex the Wonder Dog. Sidney Ling's career, if there even was one, seemed to revolve around two things in particular. You see, between the bizarre pieces of artwork, the mysterious claims to fame, and the strange narcissism that would lead anyone to have at least three blogspot websites dedicated to themselves, Sidney Ling was just a guy who really loved dogs in the spotlight. There's no proof that Lex the Wonder Dog ever existed. Just like there's no proof that Ling was the world's youngest physical trainer, or the youngest photographer, or that he even has a fan club. My best guess as an amateur YouTuber is this. Sidney Ling wanted a legacy. And when he ended up in this book, well, he got one. And isn't that what we're all trying to do? Hey, thank you so much to everyone who watched this all the way through. There isn't a lot of information out there on Mr. Ling, so please feel free to share anything else that you happen to know. Also, if you happen to have any more theories on this weird case, drop those below too. Um, I know I've been away for a while, I've had a lot of life stuff going on, but I'm happy to be back and being able to do something that I love again. Um, I noticed that I got a lot of views on my last couple of videos recently, and I just want to say thank you so much to everyone who checked me out. It really means a lot, and I know that I'm far from ever becoming, you know, popular like some of my favorite YouTubers out there like Nexpo or Wendigoon, but I'm trying and I want to be a part of that kind of cool true crime YouTube click. Um, yeah, and give me a subscribe and a like if you like what you uh, saw, and comment down below. Thank you, everyone.